My name is Robert Ringer, and I'd like to welcome everyone to today's edition of the Liberty Education Interview Series. Today we have a very special guest, former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, who has been at the forefront of the conservative movement of this country for more than three decades. Now, obviously, Speaker Gingrich doesn't need much of an introduction. As everyone knows, he's a regular contributor to Fox News and the author of many best-selling books, the latest being Real Change, which I believe is due out in paperback very soon. Mr. Speaker, it's a real honor to have you with us today. Well, it's great to be with you. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I know you feel strongly that the U.S. is a center-right country. I hear you say that so much on television, and believe me, I'm rooting for you. I'm hoping you're right in your assessment, but the way voters are being bought off by the Obama-stration right now, I'm really starting to wonder about that and worry about it. So why don't you give me some peace of mind personally and tell me why you still believe in your heart of hearts that we're a, right, a center-right country? Well, first of all, I think we're a center-right country in the broadest sense because if you look at all the values of the American people, and we have at americansolutions.com uh, what we call the platform of the American people. If you click on platform and you'll see uh, issue after issue after issue where uh, 65, 70, 80, 90 percent of the American people are in agreement. Uh, the elites are not in agreement, and the left-wing machine is not in agreement. And we've been in a long struggle between a not very effective Republican Party and a very well-organized left, which has been biding its time and which has been trying to uh, find a way to, to um, uh, seize power. And frankly, uh, the Republicans in the last two elections gave them that opportunity. But this is the fourth time in my lifetime that we've seen the left try to radicalize the country. Uh, Lyndon Johnson tried it. He shattered the Democratic Party decisively. Uh, and uh, his his uh, dominance lasted exactly two years, 1964 to 66. The Republicans came roaring back in 66. And by 68, they won the first election. And for 40 years, no overt liberal could win. Obama's the first overt liberal to win in 40 years. Um, then uh, the Republicans blew it with, with uh, Watergate and the Ford-Reagan split, uh, and uh, we came back again, uh, and people had, uh, you know, you had Jimmy Carter, who entered office in January of 1977 as the uh, most uh, uh, popular new incumbent in American polling history, higher than Obama was this year, and... Um, that went on for, you know, four years. But at the end of four years, you had Ronald Reagan elected. Uh, so, so if you if you take that example, take those two examples, and think about how they have worked, um, the fact is that uh, I have um, uh, some considerable belief that they're going to overreach. The third time they overreached was ninety three, ninety four, uh, when uh, Clinton followed the advice of the congressional Democrats tried to radicalize health care, tried to take uh, radicalized gun control laws, tried to, uh, did pass the largest tax increase in history. Uh, the result was you had a um, tremendous response in 94, and, and we won uh, control of the House for the first time in 40 years. So three times now you've seen the left try to radicalize the country. Three times you've seen the American people who thought they were voting for one thing and got another. Uh, and three times you had a dramatic reaction uh, almost overnight. Well, you know, uh, probably the one thing that gives me uh, hope is there's a misconception that Obama won by a landslide. But I always say, you know, he really only won by uh, three points. Uh, he really only won by three points because the margin was 52 to 46. So a shift of just three points in the uh, in the opposite direction would have been a dead heat. And I think it's important to understand that because this was running uh, against, and it's just a personal belief, the weakest Republican candidate of my lifetime, somebody who, uh, who as uh, uh, Dick Armey says, is uh, really philosophically confused. He ran against George Bush, who rightly or wrongly was one of the most unpopular presidents in recent history, and he was running against what, what Bush uh, – did, and as you pointed out, what he shamefully did right at the end of his uh, term with the uh, with the bailout package. Uh, third, he got, what, 90% or so of the African-American vote, and that was 90% of a record turnout 
of African Americans. So that game gave him a huge advantage. And uh, I think a large percentage of the vote was sentimentally based on race. And uh, finally, above all, McCain had actually pulled ahead in this race until the uh, bottom fell out of the economy. So that might give a lot of substance to what you're you're saying. I think it's at 20 or 25 percent in the middle. Uh, they bought into it, and it's just going to be interesting to see how long it takes before they start saying, "Wait a minute, this guy isn't. He, he, he is. There's something wrong here. He's not. He's not doing what we thought he was going to do." Uh, when he's talking about change, maybe he's talking about the kind of some uh, change that uh, we don't really like. So. Well, remember, Obama campaigned as though he were were within the framework of the Reagan system because he campaigned for uh, a tax cut for 95% of all Americans. Yeah, and uh, he even repeated that that, uh, disingenuous line the other night. I mean, the the fact is what he didn't tell you is that the the carbon price increase that he wants to build in through cap-and-trade will be a tax increase for every single American if you use electricity or you use gasoline or oil or you use heating fuel. Uh, Now, if you don't use electricity and you don't use gasoline or uh, heating oil uh, or natural gas, you'll probably be all right. But uh, there ain't very many Americans who don't use electricity. Right. And there are very few Americans that don't have a vehicle that burns something that, that would be the price of which would be would be raised by government under the Obama proposal the other night. Yeah, I agree with you. He's very slick. He says he's going to do so many things, but he sure does uh, leave out a lot. And I thought Laura Ingram last night pointed out three major things that he that were wrong with his speech. But let's get to 2010. I know that that you and all Republicans are focused on the 2010 elections, but my concern is that the Democrats are stacking the deck in the hopes of establishing a permanent majority. I've been, I feel like a voice in the wilderness. I've been screaming about the dangers of a, a dictatorship uh, put in place, a, a sedition act, um, uh, as I think we had under what Woodrow Wilson. I think we've had it twice in this country. Um, so my question is, how are the Republicans going to cope with things like moving the census from uh, the Secretary of Commerce into the White House and rearranging the tax code in such a way that more than half of the population won't be paying any taxes uh, at all, and they're almost certainly going to vote for Democrats. And now they're talking about the D.C. voting rights bill that would make uh, D.C. residents eligible to vote for president. I've never seen anything uh, so blatant uh, as we're seeing uh, in in my lifetime, uh, how they're trying to stack the deck. Essentially, to me, it's like establishing a dictatorship, getting a permanent majority. How do you think it? Uh, how do you think Republicans should cope with all this stuff when the election's coming up? Well, for, first of all, I don't think they should think as Republicans. I think they ought to think as Americans, and they ought to reach out to every American. Or to take the example you said a minute ago. Uh, you know, yes, it, it may be true that on income tax people pay less, although everybody who works pays the FICA tax, uh, which is going to go up under Obama. Uh, everybody who uses electricity is going to pay the Obama uh, electricity tax. Uh, and and you, you st- they they can't deliver through government the goods and services people want. I mean, there, there's no no reason to believe anywhere on the planet that we've designed bureaucracies that can do as good a job as a competitive private system because they don't have uh, the pressure to change and they do have all of the built-in protections against uh, any kind of commercial or market reality. 